All right. Complete with a pause feature. I've done a couple of tests videos, so let's get into it. Seven dollars. Great wire stripper. Definitely get yourself one. Razor blades. You can use a uh, box cutter. But I personally find these things are used as a utility knife just about everywhere and the blade gets super dull and yes you can sharpen it. So. Bien Teco 14 gauge. Bien Teco 12 gauge. Now we're not actually going to put the kind of current on this wire that would require a 12 gauge wire but the 12 gauge wire is very robust physically and if we have to run heavier current on this because of how we're making the the assembly well we can do that so what we're going to do is we're going to make a uh, male the female patch cable and this process is going to go kind of slow so run it at like 1.5x if you find me I'll show you well, I don't have a finished example to show you so you're just going to have to wait in anticipation of of it you don't need it to be very long because it's not an extension cord for our 12 volt DC applications. It's just a. Um, see how much I'm taking off? Can you see that? It's not very much. Don't take off too much. It's very fine stranded. So just take off a little bit from either end. Right? Okay. See? Now for our. XT60 legs, we're going to put three of these on there. These were used, sold used from a battery pack, but usually when you get them, they don't have this extra little bit of solder and stuff. They look like a miniature version of these connectors. And you can see how the, uh, you can see how you could put wire in there and solder it, it makes a really good mechanical connection. Now those come with caps. I didn't pull them out, but I will. These are Plano 3700 series, not waterproof because they have more um, options. They have these two small trays and then two bigger trays here. Um, and you can put the dividers wherever you want. So you can see I always end up with extra caps because I don't use them all various reasons for that. Caps, tops. So normally when you do an XT90 connector, you're supposed to thread these through here. Like that. You take your connector and there's little fingers on here, four of them, that clip into the connector. You can see those little four holes on there. So it snaps together. Now, positive always goes on the flat side, and there is an embossed positive sign. The camera's not going to pick it up, but there's a negative sign on here, so you can kind of keep it straight. It's impossible for me to keep it straight. I'm always checking, double-checking, and then just to be sure, if I'm not absolutely, like, sure, I'm using my multi-tester to check. So, first we need to tap into the battery. We'll use that to tap into the battery. All the outlets have a female XT90 connector. XT60 connector is your tap. However, for your equipment, you may only run an, oh, XT90. XT60 connector. XT90 for your tap, XT60 connector for your accessories. The idea being here is that you end up with a cable with a male tap, a female end. Oop female end and you can just continue and chain off of it without too much cable length causing a voltage drop or something like that again 
might be starting a generator off of this thing. I have a dedicated tap for the generator, so just saying. That's what the generator's running right now. I don't have enough solar panels to solar up, but this is a soldering gun. It's a blue point. It's an antique. These tips, if you buy them new, they're ridiculous. They're like $70. I found a three pack which included, I think, two of these big, heavy Mamba Jamba tips. More wattage, more power, more heat. In fact, you don't continuously run this thing. You run it in pulses. I'll show you that when I go to heat it up. You'll see me squeeze the trigger. The light will come on. And then as soon as I detect this is getting hot enough to work with, I'll let go of the trigger and I'll just pulse it with my finger. Now you could use a pants, fancy, fancy pulse wave modulated controller if you wanted to. For flux, we're using this uh, MG Chemicals rosin flux. If you have the German stuff, that's so much better. They have like a silver paste flux that's awesome. I ran out of it, so I'm just going to use that. This is non-corrosive flux. There's also a brand called No Corrode. You can use that. They sell it at the big box stores. This is plumbing solder, but it's silver. It's got silver in it. So it typically runs a little bit more expensive. I like to use it. it. Makes a good solid connection. And again, it doesn't have a corrosive flux. I have electrical solder, but this stuff's nice low temperature. Makes it very easy to work with. Um, a lot of your just run of the mill solderings so what I'm doing are, are, are going to be are going to want to high temperature and with these connectors what will happen is you'll heat up that barrel and it'll start to slide on through the connector because it's just basically you know they mold this around the barrel or pop it in or something but you know it'll start to loosen up and float and you don't want that so you take the connector that you're not doing and you hook it up like that what that does is it gives you heat sink gives you a heat sink to the other side and it keeps the pins aligned on the on the side you're soldering then you just need a clamp standard clamp you clamp it to the table I'm gonna try to change the camera position so you can see that at the bottom I'm gonna clamp it to the table so it's not gonna move I'm not using any other heat sinking. You can buy fancy heat sinks for these. Don't bother. Just use a mating connector. And we're gonna we're gonna drop the wire on the floor. We're gonna grab. Grab our wires like that. And first, now they're very fine stranded. We're gonna just dip them in the solder. Now, this comes with this pop-in lid and a regular screw-on lid, too. That's so if the solder gets warm, rosin paste uh, solder will just kind of flow if you leave it in a warm car. This keeps it from getting up against the lid and making a mess when you go to open it up the next time. So you just take this, and you probably want to wash your hands after you do this, but you just do that because when you solder them, it's, they're going to end up being... Um, rigid. All right. Now, moment of truth. You got your solder. You can put a little bit of. You can use a brush, and so you don't come off like a caveman when you do this. But it's okay if you get extra solder on because it's just going to run off on the table. That's why this table is so stained and everything. So here we go. You hear the generator change because it's taking on all the loads. So the, the tip is cold right now. I can't get any solder to flow. But you can see the light from there, which is a good indicator that I've pressed the trigger. And there we go. We get some solder going on. That tip's going to get hot. We don't want to get the tip too hot though. So we're just going to put some solder on there. And we're going to start. I 
get some solder on our wires. Making the generator jump all over the place. And we're just going to make sure. Now silicon will conduct heat fairly rapidly, so it'll become so hot you can't touch these things. Now that you have a pretty good amount of solder on them, and again, observe your polarity. The uh, raised side, see it's melting the flux that was on there. I'm just gonna heat it up. Try not to heat up the plastic on the molded connector. Okay. So we sort of have things in place. Now if we're real careful, we get on in there. Put a little additional solder on there and get it to flow really good on the connector. Yeah, it's not a great joint. As long as you've got a solid electrical joint, you can clean up the mess later. Same thing with the next one. You can kind of push because those connectors have that raised side on them. Just trying to get our tip hot here. There's two screws up here. If for some reason that tip is loose, you can tighten them up. I used a weller for a long time, but I found the tip kept losing conductivity and it was impossible to put any pressure without bending the tip. This is a solid tip, it's not going anywhere. So now we got a good mechanical bond. It's not my most perfect work, but you, you, you want to make sure if you're going to use a cap like this, because it's recessed, that there's room around that. So now we're going to clean that up a little bit. Remember the solder melts at a low temperature, so Scrape off the extra solder here. It's not that hard to do. I know if I had a proper, proper, proper stand, so you can do this with the clip too. Just be careful it doesn't spring around on you. Just shake your soldering iron, it'll knock off the extra solder, so you can use it like a desoldering iron or a desoldering bulb or whatever. I've got one of them too, but I only have two hands. So, there we go, there we go. You can start to smell the plastic on that tool it has a very particular scent to it. So if you're overheating the tool, you'll start to smell plastic coming off of here and that's like, whoo, I don't want to get too much of that in me. I'm sure it's got dioxins and everything. Always, you know, work with some good ventilation. So that's how you know you're overheating the tip or you're overheating the gun or whatever because the gun's running at max to put power into this tip, heat, power. All right, there we go. Just kind of melt that real nice. Okay, so that's the other reason I don't use these snap-on connectors is I end up with a lot of solder on there and then you find that the connector can't snap nicely over that because there's no room in there for the, for the connector to connect. So, so I don't use those. Not often, not with big gauge wire like this, which is usually what I use on such a large connector. So, I'm gonna show you, um, I'm not going to put these on. I'm going to focus on building this connector here. Uh, I'm going to go find my hot glue gun and warm it up. I'll bring it over here. It's uh, You'll see it in a second. So while we're waiting for that to heat up, I'm going to go over my... This is the waterproof version of the 3700. Get these at Harbor Freight. I, I haven't seen them for less than 20 bucks, which is too much for a piece of plastic. You can get them at Harbor Freight for $9. 
just make sure when you get them at Harbor Freight that they have a flat top. I've noticed some of their stock will have a bow um, because of production errors, and that means that these grooves that you see here, these slots, these separators, will also be bowed up, and that won't separate your stock properly. It'll tend to shuffle around, especially on the smaller stuff. Okay, so what we have here is the Harbor Freight Marine Heat Shrink. I think this is the smallest dimension that comes in that kit. That's what I got started with. You rapidly use up the other sizes and pieces. So this is from Heat Shrink Buddy on eBay. Um, they're really great. Can't say enough good things about them. You buy four foot sections of what you need. This is the three quarter inch. For XT90 connectors, you're gonna need marine heat shrink in, in uh, black and in red. You'll notice there's a little bit of difference there, but they'll both work. This might be from some older stock I had here. You can see the ends a little bit more comparable. See how much thicker they are? They're also not made out of PVC, and you see how, how shiny they are in the middle? That's uh, hot glue. It's a coating of hot glue on there. Technically, it might be called something else, but that's essentially what it is. And what you do is when you get them in, mark on there the metric, because they'll tell you what the metric is in the order. The metric and the standard sizing, and keep a piece like that, even if you end up cutting it down to here, keep it in your stock so you know what you have, what you need to reorder. You know, if all you got left is that much of the you need to reorder probably before you get to that you order four feet at a time um, of the red and the black I have some blue in here and so one of the things you can use a yellow for is for marking if you've got a higher voltage connector that's not 12 volts you know cut yourself a quarter inch of this heat shrink it around the final plug and then take a sharpie marker and write on there what the voltage is like if you've got high voltage panels coming in 180 volts right 180 volts on there so you know it's a 180 volt connector just to avoid any future mishaps um, here we've got 5 8 I believe 5 8 is the size that you order for the XT60 connectors the other ones I have here are just like half inch and stuff. You don't you don't use them as much. You'll use the three quarter, the five eighths, and the quarter inch. So notice the quarter inch is real close to five sixteenths. You'll probably use the quarter inch more than anything. Um, I seem to go through a lot of quarter inch and five sixteenths. So this is uh this is three eighths half inch, five eighths, five sixteenths, quarter inch, quarter inch, and then like I said, the leftover stuff. So that's that kit there. We're gonna be using some of this for our connectors. So we'll take that out. We'll take this little piece out because we'll probably use that too. Now, um, one of the other things that we'll do is we'll probably sleeve those cables with a little bit of three eighths. So we'll use that too. You don't need to use it though. So you don't need to buy stuff you don't you can't use. So now our hot glue gun is heated up. It's the best one I found is this little gorilla. And if you give it a gentle squeeze and you start to feel the trigger move and the hot glue come out, then you know it's probably up to temperature. So now what we're going to do is, we're, now this is cool, we're going to pull off the male connector that we're using as a heat sink. We're going to take our female and we're going to slide it onto about there. Now you notice I didn't cut this real square. Make sure you cut these square when you do them. So this end's real square. I'm going to use that near the plug. You don't have that much coverage of the plug, so you want to make sure it's a nice and square connection. So now, what I prefer to use is a heat gun at 750 watts. That is the low temperature setting on a Harbor Freight heat gun. So 
seen it in here, so let's see if I can dig it out. There she goes. For some reason, they decided to call it a drill master. <laughs> it doesn't drill. It just it's heat. That's all it is. So. Again, you don't need the high temperature setting unless you're outside in the cold or something you need to preheat the gun but when you go to actually shrink use the low temperature which is the up button on here the number one you hear the generators pump up when I turn this on so we're just going to heat up the end just the end this is not enough heat to melt the connector, just enough heat to get that heat shrink to start to go and you'll start to see it shrink up. Again, this is not my best work because I'm working on a camera, but I'm thinking about the audience at home. Set that aside, make sure you're heat gun tip and your soldering iron tip are always pointed off the table or in some direction where you're not going to accidentally touch them. Always be aware that that is hot. On or not. Just be conscious of that. I just use standard glue sticks. Well, these are like coming in an industrial box of 10 pounds of glue sticks. So you see in there it's not shorting out or anything, but what we're going to do is seal it from moisture. We're going to drop the hot glue gun in there, and very quickly, we're going to squeeze. We're going to, there we go. We're going to squeeze hot glue in there on all sides of the wiring. I've only filled it up about a third of the way. That's fine, because when we shrink this up, the heat's going to cause that hot glue to come out and that's gonna hermetically seal our connector. Hang on a second. I hope you can see that. It's shrinking up and it's gonna push out the excess hot glue. We don't really wanna waste hot glue going to push it out as it shrinks up to its final form. We're going to give it a good, nice heat treatment. And then, now if you wanted to, you could sleeve the two wires down to about here before you did this procedure, but um, this is good enough for camera work. I'm just showing you the basics while also building a connector for myself. So now normally you grab a rag, just any old rag will do, and you wipe off the glue while it's still hot. Just wipe it off while it's still hot. If you were gonna use this in an extremely hot environment, that glue may heat up and ooze out. It'd have to be extremely hot. And that's why you could, if you wanted a little extra durability on this, like if you're going to plug and unplug it a lot, use this material to take about that much of it, cut it, put it down the wires, push it all the way in before you do your final heat shrink like I did, and heat shrink, and then that'll give you even more robust connection. But as it is now, when it cools, I know that this flat surface here will be firm. This will be firm. It'll be a good connection point to pull this in and out. Again, this is for demonstration purposes. I'm kind of cutting out some of the more elaborate building that I might do. So that's how you do it. And then you do the other side the same way. You take the male connector, okay? Most of you are gonna be putting connectors on here and not building a splice. What I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do it off camera because it would take too long, is do exactly the same kind of procedure but with the smaller gauge, 14 gauge wire. See how much more like flexible it is, but it's still strong. And I'm gonna tie this wire in here like that. 
several times and make a nice big fatty sli splice that will still solder on to the XT90 male connector. And you could do this the other way around. You could do it on the female side if you wanted to, but it'll still splice on to the male connector. But absolutely, I won't be able to use that collar that I showed you earlier that I don't use that I tossed away because it just won't fit. But the heat shrink will. And you'll end up with, you know, two or three positive smaller gauge, two or three pos uh, negative smaller gauge wires coming out of the connector. And uh, what, I, what I suggest you do with this is you um, strip a little more wire off, get them all really physically bound together well, solder them up into a single plug, and then solder them onto your connector, and then slide the three-quarter heat shrink over the top of the connector and bundle it all together. And then you'll have... I'll pause this, I'll do all the work, and I'll show you when I'm done. Something I can't really show on camera is these are sharp. They will just slice right through the wire if you just squeeze them. Now for idiots, they had a little dial on here so you could, I've already drilled the rivet out and gotten rid of it because it was useless for me. That you could set the gauge of the wire and then squeeze and it would only get that closed and then you could pull it off but really the way you do it so you have flexibility because you're always you know stripping different wire gauges and stuff is is drill that indexer out, off so that it just it's just a simple mechanism and when you go to strip the wire you're going to feel the resistance of the jacket and you're going to squeeze and twist the wire right and then you're just going to feel that wire underneath and when you feel the wire, you strip. It wasn't my best stripping job, but again, I'm doing it for the camera, for the folks at home. Because you don't want to cut these little fine wires that are inside the wire jacket. So now I won't talk and I'll just strip instead. These are going to go on the connector side. So you see what I did? I just felt that, oh, I hit the wire. So then I back off. See, I do it by... What do you call it like mechanical memory i don't think about it i don't narrate it or anything so when i'm talking i'm distracting myself from doing the actual work so I usually don't document what i do this way i document it before and after again we're going to make several of these extensions so we're going to use the first one that i cut i just went oh yeah i need an extension to be about that long so gonna feel the bounce stop pull off you see I'm backing off a little bit so these these sharp jaws don't strip the wire and this other end's gonna have to be stripped more because I'm gonna so I just squeeze it until it bounces and then just pull it off and it leaves the wire intact what do we have we had a black one red one when you know the black one I do three I don't know that you'll always need all three or whatever but I just do two on these I don't know again squeeze until you feel it hit the wire which is harder because the silicon's very soft so it'll offer almost no it'll offer some resistance but also n almost none there you go you just pull it off you haven't stripped any of the wire i mean you haven't um, cut through any of the wire you just cut through the silicon now what you can do is you can bundle these together right then use your heat shrink to keep them together to band them essentially so maybe I'll use that much heat shrink and I'm going to add a third wire to this and then it'll be heat shrunk before I even start soldering and working with it and that way it'll keep these wires mechanically together as I solder them and as I connect them so 
I've heat shrunk it. I've woven them together. I've twisted them together. And I soldered them and made sure they were all, had a good dose of solder on them. As soon as they cool a little bit more to handle, I'll do something like this. And then uh, we'll further deal with this insulation issue. Um, what we can do is take a little bit of unshrunk half inch, slide it over everything that we've done, slide it back away from the heat, and then when we're done with this cluster, we'll heavily insulate that side. And that way, even with the hot glue and the heat shrink as two means of keeping these connectors from touching each other, there'll be good insulation there. So we'll, when we're done with that solder joint, we'll just slide this up over to the tip. When you use your clamp, don't clamp on the edge of the table because the clamp will go like this. It'll flutter up and down. Clamp deep as far as you can go. And that way the clamp's not gonna move around on you. Let's just get some solder going on there. It's going to take a lot of heat to get this hot enough. So I'm going to preheat the tip. And just let it sink. And the heat will transfer. And I'm looking at the connector. Okay, we got a good mechanical join there with the connector. Remember, I already had the connector hot, so we're looking for solder flow. It's real good around that connector for a good mechanical connection, but do you see how close these connectors are to each other? So what we're going to do, just as an extra thing, is slide this up like that to boot that connector, and then this whole thing will be sealed in as well, too. You really want to push the uh, sleeve up against as far as you can because as you can see as I heat shrink it, it shrinks back a little bit from the terminal. So there's that too. There's just a little bit of that terminal exposed but I'm not worried about that. What I did here was instead of using 3 14 gauge, I used 2 14 gauge and 2 12 gauge and I'll run that off to a female XT90 connector, which is still a little hot, but I'll run it off to this. Now we're going to sleeve this. Again, we'll just use our three quarter inch, it'll deform and, and fit over this whole thing. We'll measure it so that. We get good coverage of the connector, but we can still see the tip of it, so. Use a nice pair of scissors. Get a nice sharp cut across the top. Put it over our build. And just like with the XT90s, I'm going to attempt, although it's a little hard because the glue is it's not very accessible, you know. you got to put, put a little glue on to begin with. But be careful, the glue is hot, so it'll start your connector shrinking on you. If these connections aren't hot enough, you're going to have a cold bond and you're going to have a pore joint that's going to crack on you. So, I put a little preliminary glue on there. I'm just going to sleeve the XT90 connector. I'm going to leave a little bit of the yellow out because 
I like to be able to see the connector. And then you shrink the tip. Now with normal wire, this would be really stiff, but you can see how nice and bendy these are. With normal like low voltage landscaping wire, which you can use, you won't get that flexibility. So now I've made like a cup and I've already put some hot glue down in there. There's not much room in there for anything. So we're just gonna shove a bunch more hot glue down in there. And we're gonna keep it in this orientation as we heat it up. Hopefully what'll happen is some of that hot glue will make its way down in there. Of course, there's other ways to do this, but. Some of that hot glue on the inside will make its way down in there as I heat this up and it'll coat the interior. We're right about at the maximum of what this heat shrink should be able to do because it'll get too, too thin. You don't want that. That's why when I did these upgraded to a 14, uh, what did I say? 12 gauge wire for the one of the three accessory connections for a, a future female I'm gonna put on there, on that end. That's a male, but. I had to upgrade this from the 3 8 to the half inch because when it shrinks it thickens and it strengthens and you don't get that strength if you use a sleeve that just barely fits over your wires. You want to use a sleeve and marine heat shrink that's loose, that easily fits over all your wires because when it shrinks that jacket's going to thicken and strengthen. So you don't want to cut it too close. Again, I'll just wipe the excess off while it's still hot. Both sides. Again, I'm building this for the camera for folks at home, so it's not the best work, but it's okay. That'll cool. And this will, like I said, help to hold that all that in place. It's hot right now, so it's going to be flexible, but when it cools, it'll be a lot harder. This is not PVC heat shrink. This is um, a different material that doesn't, it, it stands up to temperature better, has more similar characteristics to the silicon wire. But mainly I wanted to do this to show you how to put a low voltage, standardized, polarized, covered, you know, it's not going to short out connector on your wiring harnesses uh, so that you have a way on your 12 volt system or 12 or 24 or 48 just remember you know if you're using a variety of voltages use a little yellow right here's our yellow cut about a quarter inch Heat shrink that, it'll band it, it'll shrink, it won't be a quarter inch, it'll be just barely enough room for you to write the voltage on there so you know, hey, this is a high voltage source. I always use female for the source, male for the side that needs power. Um, on chargers and stuff, that's, you know, always use this for your battery side or supply side, I guess. And there you go. There's all your other connections that I'll wire into these smaller XT60s. Now these do not come with a cap. So one of the reasons why I didn't use a cap on here is to show you how to do it without a cap. You don't need the cap. Because on these, you don't have the option of having a cap. You just have the wires. And you see how on that battery pack when they originally made it, 
they pushed that heat shrink way down in there and then did the heat shrink that's the way to do it but then you can take another sleeve over the top for strain relief and heat shrink it again just like I did here except you won't use the half inch you'll use the 5 8 you'll use the 5 8 size and do the same thing there you go so this will keep and you can pick the extra glue off this will keep moisture I, I you know I just did a really quick job it doesn't actually bond to the silicon very well so this will keep moisture out of the connector humidity all that kind of stuff that'll lead to corrosion after you solder the ends you could very carefully take some copper paste and coat them and then sleeve them if you want to go through all that but I find it's unless you're doing like an outdoor connection it's probably not necessary and if you're doing an outdoor connection you'd probably pre protect these connectors anyway from you'd have some kind of external thing to connect them uh, to protect them rather see it's so it's so stiff on this side I can't even connect them to each other but that's how that works that's your tap normally actually I run all this stuff off one of the female ends so the tap is you know flexible you can put it where you want it but that's your tap and then these are all your other um, extensions your XT60s uh, put an XT90 on the two heavy gauge ones here so I'll have two XT90 females and two XT60 60 females.